What's going on, Lakers Nation? What's going on, Lakers Fast Break family? And welcome in, everybody. Talk about a thriller. Talk about a thriller of a game, man. Just when you thought <laughs> all hope was lost. Just when you thought, man, we're going to get popped the whole game from beginning to finish. Nope. We come back. We take a, We take the lead. In the freaking overtime, first lead of the game in overtime. And oh man, oh man, am I happy about it? We got my dog Stone Hansen in the building. Stone, what's the deal? I know you're on cloud nine right now. I don't know if you like <laughs> I'm I'm a I'm a static. How do you feel? Yeah, this is this is a very fun and um you know uh fulfilling win. Uh Lakers put a lot of effort into this. As you can see, I think they're going to win the champion this year, championship now. Uh, no, no, but um, I do think that uh, they really wanted this. They wanted to prove to themselves that they uh, have the ability to close out games uh, with or without LeBron, and uh, they succeeded in doing that. So it was um, a fun game. It didn't start off fun, but it ended very fun, uh, and I think – uh, obviously, the most important thing is is we got to win. Man, indeed, we get we did get the win, but wow, talk about. I mean, I mean, th there's a lot for us to talk about. I guess first, first of all, let me say, talk about just like a thriller, right? Like this is the reason why I tell people don't ever turn off basketball games anymore nowadays. Like I'm I'm the type to where my team could be down by a gazillion points like basketball is a game of runs don't ever turn the tv off because wow you just may turn around and get the dub i mean credit to anthony davis for having a big game uh credit to d'angelo russell for stepping up big in that third quarter shout out to everybody up in here live in the chat right now we got 70 plus people in here right now um but stone i guess i the first thing i want to i want to bring up to you is how do you feel about no lebron tonight but i guess reports of LeBron possibly playing in tomorrow in Memphis. How do you feel about that? How does that make you feel? Um, uh, at this point, I kind of thought that we would win without LeBron because their record's been so good <laughs> without him. Like, I don't know why, but we uh, we tend to. I don't know what our record is, but I know it's positive at this point. We beat the Bucks already without him. Celtics, Knicks, like. Uh, I don't know. Maybe LeBron should just sit the rest of the year. No, I'm just kidding. But um, we. The fact that we have him tomorrow, I think, is big too because, um, obviously the the Grizzlies had have had the season from hell with the amount of injuries they've had and all the off court issues and all that. But uh, they do at this point now have Jaron Jackson and Desmond Bain back. Like, um, they're not just gonna be that sort of pushover team, um, that they've sort of been throughout the entirety of the season. I think we're, we are gonna have to put some effort into winning that game. Um, so having LeBron certainly helps and. Maybe it gives an opportunity for AD to rest after playing double eight, uh, overtime. And uh, you saw him having some obvious like knee massages and stuff throughout the those last couple periods. So um, I don't know. I think it's too early to say whether AD sits or plays, especially without, uh, you know, for sure knowing what LeBron's status is going to be. But um, I think either way, it's good to have LeBron because it probably takes off some pressure and effort uh, for off of AD tomorrow, uh, having to exert any more energy than he did tonight. Absolutely, and let me let me welcome in another Lakers fast break family member, L Rob. L Rob, how you doing? Hey John, I'm good. I'm good. Love your hat, bro. Man, appreciate it. Appreciate it. Just I honestly couldn't find my Lakers hat today. I don't know where it was, so I only had this hat and I had uh, a New York uh, New York Mets hat, and I was like, you know what? I mean, New York Yankees. I was like, you know what? Let me rock Detroit. <laughs> all right. All right. L Rob, tell us, give us your thoughts on the game today. I mean, thriller, double OT game. Uh, no LeBron James, but we do end up getting the win. And now I believe we're six and four without LeBron. Thoughts on this game? Just Man, thoughts in general. Was, What's going on? It was a classic. That's, that's, you know, it was a classic. I was, uh, you know, when Milwaukee went on that little run, being in the fourth, I was like, and AD was limping. I was like, poor. Wave the white flag, Darvin. You know, let's 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 turn this in. This is not gonna happen. Um, but you know, I guess that's one of the Darvin strengths. He he always wants the team to keep fighting, keep fighting, keep fighting. And it worked out today. They just, you know, 
I have to tip my cap to Austin Reeves. I thought he um, was the MVP. You know, it was a lot of play. Everybody, you know, to win that type of game, you have a lot of guys step up. But I thought his effort throughout the beginning of the game, he was fighting on defense. He's checking Dame. He's banging with Chris Middleton. His effort, man, was off, you know, was was crazy all game. His I, energy and effort. Yeah, absolutely. No, absolutely. Austin Reeves was was big for us. But, I mean, I, I guess El, you know, El Rob just told us that Austin Reeves would be his MVP. Stone, if you had to pick an MVP of this game, I mean, we had three different players that had a triple double. So uh, you have a wide variety of players to choose from. Um, who would you say is the MVP of this game in your eyes? Uh, I'd agree with El Rob, but I think it's very close with, for me, AD. I think AD, um, especially in those later quarter, the, uh, sorry, not quarters, the, the periods, the overtime periods. Uh, he kept us afloat with his defense. I thought um, he had some very timely blocks uh, that I think really aided in us uh, being able to pull this out. Uh, but yeah, I'm going to have to go Reeves ultimately. I mean, Reeves had some huge shots um, made up for that missed three at the end of the first overtime and was able to get a huge one in, late in the, the second overtime. Um, I think he played decent defense at times against Lillard. Uh, I thought he had some good possessions defensively, uh, which isn't always the case, but I think we have to give credit when it's due. Um, and then he made some decent passes. Obviously, near the end of it, the entire team was making bad sloppy passes because we were just so fatigued. Uh, but I think throughout the majority of the game, uh, Reeves' uh, passing was was a big part of our success as well. Yeah, no, I, absolutely. And I mean, Reeves came up big tonight. Rui came up big tonight. And then, I mean, Darvin Ham almost screwed us out the game in that fourth quarter by leaving Toy and Prince in there and sitting Rui. Uh, but we ended up still being able to pull it out. But honestly, if if I had to give an MVP at this game, I'd be I'd be right there in agreement with you guys. I mean, I think Anthony Davis was huge for us tonight, of course, on the defensive end and uh, offensive offensive end. He had 34 and 23 rebounds. Uh, but I know you guys noticed because you know Reggie and um, they were saying on the broadcast as well that it's like uh, Anthony Davis. You know, granted, I want to give him the benefit of the doubt. He's guarding Giannis on defense, so I'm sure you know it gets very tiring. But Anthony Davis in that um, overtime overtime periods offensively was just kind of non-existent. Like I felt like he was just more of a decoy to just keep Giannis out of the play. Now I, you know, when I'm watching the game personally. The way I feel about it as a basketball player, I want the best the best player on my team with the ball in their hands in late game situations. That's just the way I play basketball. Now, I understand maybe if he's because like, all right, well, we don't want to bring Giannis into the equation. We don't want to bring Giannis in this pick and roll. So let's just put Anthony Davis in the corner. I guess I can understand that, that you know, that mindset. But if you look at the flip side on the Bucks. I mean, it didn't matter. They were running Dame and Giannis pick and rolls, high pick and rolls because that's just their best two players on a team. And they either want the ball on Dame's hand or in Giannis's hand. And that's exactly the only possible outcome that can come from that. While the Lakers, you know, shout out Austin Reeves, who got it done tonight. Shout out D'Angelo Russell stepped up tonight. Um, Spencer Dinwiddie, I wouldn't say he stepped up, <laughs> was very often three point line, but he did hit some timely baskets. Uh, and sometimes that, you know, came up big for us. But I mean, realistically, if you think about it, it was really Spencer Dinwiddie, Austin Reeves, DeAndre Russell in crunch time versus Giannis and Dame, which is crazy to me because it's like, I get it. Maybe AD is tired or whatnot, but hey, my dog, when no LeBron out there, this is what we need you there for. So that's that's kind of how I feel on that. Um, man, I, I'm not gonna lie, guys. I'm 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 happy though because I came, I was in such a low earlier in the game. I was like, dang, like we were down. Four to 17, six to 23. I was like, oh, here, here we go. Lowest first, lowest uh, first quarter all season long. So crazy to me that we came back and went in and, and won this game. Um, L. Robert Stone, let me let me get your guys' thoughts, I guess, on as far as like Darvin Ham. Do, do you feel like this was a, another atrocious Darvin Ham game or was this one we, we, you know, we could live with? You want me to go, Stone? Well, okay, so I'm, I mean, you guys, uh, you know, I always listen to the podcast, so uh, I know John, you, uh, I know you guys are a little more critical of Darwin than I am, so uh, I would, when you say another atrocious game, I don't think he has a, a ton, he's only got to, I mean, he's got to play the cards that's dealt to him, 
I do get frustrated with the usage of Anthony Davis out on the perimeter so much instead of getting him, you know, in the paint a little bit. Um, but that's a lot of that is AD's preference, I believe. You know, AD, you know, in the beginning of the game, Giannis is bullying, bullying him. He's going in the paint. And AD is like, I really don't want all this smoke. Let me just, I'll chill out here and hope my jumper is going. Um, so no, I thought I thought uh, Darwin uh, did a good job. Um, I was worried about not getting Rui back in there, um, but by the time the fourth quarter came around, AD was on fumes. Um, he he really was. He had exerted himself so much that he was on fumes. So I I can understand it, but I'm like you. I want to see AD get get him at least a touch, especially you know they're running up and down the court and. Uh, Dinwiddie's holding it for five seconds outside, and they're doing picking, you know, switches with Dinwiddie and D'Lo and Austin and AD is just sitting in the corner. That's crazy, but I, I do think some of it was uh, fatigue on AD's part. I did like um, um, Tory and Prince. TP did not have a good shooting game, but I liked his energy too. I mean, he he was attacking the rim. Uh, he had a good plus minus when he was in. You know, he was trying to make things happen. Um, so I appreciate his aggressiveness. I think his energy, along with Reeves' energy, kind of kept the Lakers afloat a little bit. Of course, Rui was scoring good early until uh, D'Lo and, uh, joined the party in the second half. AD was kind of consistent. Um, but then once D'Lo got cooking in the second half, it was like, okay, we really have a chance now. Now it's a ball game. So yeah, I give I, I give I give Darwin a, a you know a good grade for I mean you won in the double overtime. It's hard to give him a, a bad grade today of all days. Uh, but yeah, I, I thought he I would have liked to seen from an energy standpoint. I would have liked to seen Christie play just a little bit more to see what he could have brought to the you know see if he could have brought a little more energy as well. But that's probably the one thing I would you know nitpick on. Okay, Stone, where you at with that? Um, well, to be quite honest, uh, heading into the, what was it? The fourth quarter, uh, we were down by so much that I was like, me and Ber Gerald both were like, you know, just pull the plug, take the starters out. I think it's a wrap. Uh, and it's a good thing. We're not the head coach because we wouldn't have had a chance to win this game. Uh, obviously ham still believed, uh, in the fact that he did, uh, and kept the starters in is ultimately what led to this win. So, it's hard to be too critical after making that sort of call. Um, I do think there are things to clean up. I think um, in the first half, you saw that um, you were able to get uh, Brooke Lopez further away from the rim uh, defensively, where you could bring him up because they were using AD to get floaters. Uh, he was getting some nice shots from like the free throw area. Uh, and because of that, it had to bring uh, Brooke Lopez up higher and he had more backdoor cuts and things of that nature to get easier layups. Um, and we went away from that in the second half for some reason, when I think that that could have um, given us, we wouldn't have had to fight so hard um, to, to get back into the game. Uh, so there's things like that. I think also um, that like in the second overtime, in my opinion, uh, I would rather have a bench player with fresher legs than, your worst starter with, um, you know, super tired legs playing 40 plus minutes. Like I probably would have subbed Prince in earlier for, for Dinwiddie just to, uh, I think it's more effective to have a guy that's a little fresher for, for that second overtime. Uh, maybe Chris, even someone that just gives you a little more energy. Um, so there's things that I think it wasn't a perfectly coached game, but the fact that he kept the starters in uh, and, and got us to the point where we had a shot to win and ultimately did, I think, as commendable and, and it's hard to rag too much on, on something like that. Yeah. I mean, I, I feel that I know, like when I was, when I was watching the game, you know, like I mentioned, I'm taking notes and I'm like, dang, like taking out Rui in this fourth quarter could absolutely cost us the game. And I thought that's what's going to happen. But um, there's a saying uh, that you know, they talk about in the NBA world. That's winning cures all cures, everything. And so, you know, winning, you know, cures it. So, you know what, Darvin Ham, in my book, I, I know I know L Rob likes you, but in my book, you get a, you you get another pass. You get to live another day, Darvin Ham. You get a hall pass for tonight. But what I gotta ask, guys, is the biggest question I think going on in, in the game was did Giannis travel? Do y'all feel like Giannis traveled on that? Uh 
No, yes, or, or, or where y'all at with that? <laughs> I, I thought he lifted it, yes, but it's hard to make that type of call. It was it was a bang bang play. I thought the foul of the D-Lo got fouled really going to the rack. That yeah. one was the one to me that was like, okay, come on, call with, that with Malik. Yeah, yeah, that one. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I thought the Giannis one. It's hard because I think they only showed one replay, if I'm, if I'm not mistaken. So it's hard, only one angle, one replay to really get the full picture. To me, it looked clean. It looked like a, a three step with, you know, the first step being more of a gather. So I thought it was clean with the Giannis thing not being a travel. But um, like L. Rob's saying, it, it's, it's kind of hard to tell in that situation because they only gave us one replay, too. So it, it's not super easy to make that judgment based on that. Yeah, no, I, I, um, I agree with y'all. And I mean, talking about the D'Angelo Russell layup that came the, the possession right before that, I was pissed because like, that's exactly like, that's still the fourth quarter. That's not overtime. Like I understand overtime, Anthony Davis is tired. That knee's hurting, but fourth quarter, like this is just a regular la- regulation basketball game. AD, I need you. I need you demanding the ball at this point. Like here, like we need a bucket. Give me the ball. That was, that was my biggest qualm. With Anthony Davis, but man, guys, I'm on, I'm on cloud nine. I'll be honest, because I wrote right here on my notes, right? Because I really th- I thought we were gonna lose. This felt like one of those games where you know you dig yourself in such a big hole early in the game, and then you just you just can't simply get yourself out of it. And that's how it felt. I mean, really, until we took that first lead in overtime, we would have these great runs, these 16-2 runs, these 17-7 runs, but we'd still be like you know down by five, down by six. Uh, and then that never really brought us back into it. So I wrote right here. I was like, man, I feel like we lost this game because we didn't have enough offense, but we also didn't have enough defense. But I mean, second half, we just absolutely turned that up, man, and got us a win. So I'm still, <laughs> I don't even, I kind of don't even know what to say, to be honest. I, I, speaking of uh, close calls, I think AD did get away with fouling Giannis on that, on that live over the top. Uh, uh, was at the end of the first regulation. Yeah, he, yeah. Definitely, he yeah. definitely grabbed them uh, and they let that one go. So I guess it kind of balanced out. Yeah, I, I think to me more of the foul there was when Giannis was turning around to go to the rim. It looked like AD was holding him a little bit. And yeah. that's that's where they should have called it. But yeah. I mean, it is what it, it is. Every team is going to get bad calls both ways. Um, and the, the really you have to put yourself in a position to be able to overcome that where you have enough of a, a points buffer to withstand something like that. And it that doesn't have to decide the game. So, um, you know, as much as it, it sucks one way or another when you have bad calls, uh, really, you, you don't want to put the game based on that. You want to be able to say, you know, you won without having to have that call. Okay. And and so we know we 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 got the classic back to back tomorrow. We got um, Memphis. Um, so and I, and I believe Stone, you said that Jaron Triple J will, will be will be there, correct? Uh, I I don't know for sure tomorrow. I've just uh, been saying that him and and obviously Desmond have been playing as of lately. I don't know their status for sure headed into tomorrow though. Got you, got you. Okay, well, so you know, uh, if he does play, you know, that's another big, big, uh, real big in this in this league that. You know, AD is going to have to watch out for. So, how do you, how do you guys feel like tonight? He played fifty one minutes and fifty two seconds. How do you guys feel about him uh, playing tomorrow? Do you want him to sit out that game tomorrow? How do you, how do y'all feel about that? L. Rob looking like he got something to say. Talk to me, L. Rob. If we sit out, if he sits out, we look, we probably going to lose. I mean, I, it's just, I mean, that's, I mean, real talk. I mean, <laughs> I, I haven't seen enough of this team without AD. Without AD, they just don't look good at all. Not a whole lot of resistance. Usually, not a whole lot of fight. Um, mm-hmm. I mean, to you know, it would be great for him to sit. At some point, you got to pay the piper, though. When you're playing 51 minutes, you played it tomorrow. You got Indiana on Friday, so at some point, it's gonna catch up with them. And and you know, probably more more likely Friday than than tomorrow if LeBron can you know hold us down because Indiana will be running and they will want revenge for this past game. So um, yeah. now we're going to be for really tired AD, especially for that game. Let me, let me ask you a question real quick, uh, Rob, because I mean, here, like here, here's a dilemma. Cause I, I absolutely agree with you. If Anthony Davis doesn't play, like we, we struggle to have any type of identity, especially on the, de- on the defensive end. Um, but it's like, 
we kind of also want to keep Anthony Davis, you know, ready and prime come this, you know, play in situation that we're going to be to where it's going to be like a one or two game, our season on the line. So I guess like what's, what's the strategy? Like, you know, what, what do you go with here? Do would you rather maybe try to punt a game with the team that's already struggling with like the Grizzlies in, in hopes to preserve Anthony Davis? Or would you rather say, look, AD, you're going to play through this dog. Cause we just can't take no more else. I'm not for punting game, so okay. Let's. I mean, we we got a legit chance to move into the uh, seventh or eighth seed. So you you Go you've got to get you got to get out of playing two games if you can. Uh, in the, you know in that tournament, you got to just try to have one game, win it, and then go into the you know who knows if somebody falters. If you keep winning, they got a very manageable schedule. They 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 got a very you know slim slim chance of moving up to six, but I think they got a uh, a 50 50 chance looking at how difficult Phoenix schedule is to finish up. And I do believe we own the tiebreaker with Phoenix. I think they got a, a decent chance to pass Phoenix and at least get the um, eighth seed. Stone, um, do you agree <laughs> with, with L Rob on that? Hey, we got to go for it, or are you looking for more to preserve Anthony Davis? Uh, I, I definitely get where L Rob is coming from, and, and there's a strong case to be made. I, the way, I come from it is, uh, I obviously uh, preserving AD is part of it. Um, that that's the main part of it. The other part of it is if LeBron's good to go tomorrow, especially that you now put that pressure on LeBron, saying, "Hey, you know, now it's your turn to carry this team to a win," um, and and get him in that sort of mindset and mentality where you don't have AD. Uh, so now it's your night to, to really, you know, pull your weight and, and, and carry this team to win. You're not going up against a juggernaut. Um, you're not going up this again. If, if Desmond Bain and, and Triple J play, it's not a pushover team either. You're not going up against, you know, someone like the uh, Portland Trailblazers or something. But um, this is a team that uh, is, is, I think, even without AD is winnable. I, I think um, if AD were to sit, and then you just make sure that your guys have that mindset that, you know, this is a uh, a, a team you can beat if you play uh, well enough and if you execute well enough. Um, and I think it helps get the rest of the team um, continue into that mindset, into that play. And so I would, I would, I think, prefer AD to sit only because we also have a packed schedule to sort of rent it out these next couple of weeks. Um, and if, Something were to arise with AD. We saw massaging that knee and stuff throughout the the first um, overtime. I'd be, you know, you have no chance of, of winning those play-ins, in my opinion, of getting to the playoffs because you're going to have to probably win two. If you don't, if you only have to win one, it's still really difficult to do that without AD. So uh, from my stance, I'm trying to preserve AD as much as I can, and I think that you still can win without AD tomorrow. I don't think it's a uh, just throwing the game away if you if you don't have AD. Um, yeah. So that's that's sort of where I'm coming from. Okay. Okay. And and and, and I understand absolutely both both of your guys' side. Um, but I I guess like you know a question I had as well for you guys is like where are you at on that, John? I mean, me personally, I say we got to play him. Like, well, I'm I'm with you, L. Rob. We don't have time to punt games anymore. Like, we already punted so many games early throughout this season, thinking that we wouldn't be in the, in this situation. Um, but now we are. So now we're gonna have to deal with the consequences, the face consequences of punting those games earlier in the season. Um, so I'm with you more. I'm more with you on that, L. Rob, to where it's like, yo, AD, like. You just turned third, like didn't didn't he just turn thirty or something like that, or thirty one or something like that? He's supposed to, I believe, yeah. thirty one, right? He's supposed to be in what, like technical, like prime of his life. What what, what do they say? It's like from twenty seven to thirty something, right? So he's supposed to be in his technical prime, and it's like I understand that basketball is just a little bit more soft nowadays, but it's like, yo, I know so so many players, not personally, of course, that played eighty two game seasons. It's like. We just need you to finish up here, dog. So I'm going to need you to fight through whatever you're fighting through and be on the court. Yeah, if you got to arrest them, I mean, we got, we got, I think, easier games will be New Jersey or Washington or, you know, probably Toronto even that's on this road trip. Uh, Memphis, if, you know, with Bain back, with, with Triple J back, and, you know, Memphis 
will be get crazy. You know, they're going to play hard. I think that's going to be a more difficult game than a few of the other on the road trip if they choose to figure out a way to, to sit them. But I can understand it because coming back from 51 minutes, that's going to be it's tough. This will be a lot. Right. If it was a four four quarter game and that was it, then I would say play him. But I think the fact that it's fifty one minutes, I think, is a little more. Con- especially the fact that, I mean, he he was sitting out plays here and there with that knee, like that. To me, just raises my eyebrow a little bit headed into a possible playing situation. But I understand too wanting to put yourself in the best available position to only have to play one playing game. Um, so I I think uh, both both sides make sense um and i would i would think that um i don't expect both ad and lebron to be out tomorrow is, is where i think i'm at right now and let's welcome in the pod father the one and only gerald glassford gerald what's up nice uh, nice to have you back how you doing dog <laughs> i'm doing great i was you know what it's reverse psychology. All game long, I was answering Laker Knicks polls on playback. No, the Lakers going to win. No, the Lakers are going to go into overtime. No, the Lakers are going to win a double overtime. No, 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 no. It's reverse psychology at its finest. But a uh, great win for the Lakers. Uh, eventually, you know, I was there from the beginning, and it was absolutely a terrible beginning to the game. And uh, big shout out to everyone out here. Big shout out to you, John. L. Rob, always great to have you back, my friend. Stone Hansen, who was with me the whole time on playback. Laker Nick, everybody. The comeback wasn't fake. It was real. And all credit to AD and the rest of the Lakers uh, for getting back. You know what? He looked like he was getting used and abused in that first quarter by by Giannis. But, man, give him credit. The uh, the NBA's Player of the Week, Western Conference Player of the Week, uh, really got the job done in that second half, gutted it out, and – like Stone says, we'll see what happens for tomorrow. Absolutely. And you know what, guys? Um, kind of, you know, when LeBron sat, when I when I saw LeBron was gonna sit, it got me thinking of as far as like I, I understand, you know, trying to preserve your body, especially at the age that he's at. But it's like you, and you guys tell me maybe I'm missing something here. So please, you know, keep me honest. W- what what would have been the difference between LeBron just playing this game and sitting out next game? Is it was is there like any difference I'm missing? Because in my mind, not gonna lie, I, it looks like he's just ducking some smoke to me. This is what like, he's done this all season. He's done, he, absolutely right. He this, misses the hard game, and he get to, he plays the easy game. Absolutely right, and and it's crazy to me because it's like you're LeBron James. What are you talking about ducking smoke? Like I understand you're 39 years old, but it's like yo, in my in my mind, there makes no difference between. You you could have played tonight and then not played against Memphis. I mean, and yeah, and then not played against Memphis because in my mind it's like, okay, who's the better team? Like, f- forget uh, all the suspensions that the Grizzlies had. They could be fully healthy. I still would take the Bucks as a better team than the Memphis. So it's like we we need you there for the team that the game that's against the better team. So am I? Are you guys on par with me for that, or am I just hating a little bit on my guy? That's my goat though too. So I don't even want to hate. <laughs> Well, no, I think you're he, right. I mean, like Gerald said, it's all season. He's if nothing else, the Lakers are consistent. If they're <laughs> playing a tough team, a playoff team, one of the top teams in the league, and they're playing a bottom feeder. LeBron's playing on the bottom feeder. Let me get my 28 and <laughs> and eight and eight and uh call it a day. Great. Hey, look, I mean they looked at it probably and they say, hey, the Lakers could lose to a bad team. If LeBron doesn't play, but the chances are they're going to win that game, and the chances are they're probably going to lose to you know a top level team, even you know even uh, even if LeBron plays. So maybe from the percentages. Now I heard them say something about he gets an extra day of rest before you know going to the next game. But I mean that works both ways. If you play today, then you get an extra day of rest <laughs> before the Indiana game. So that Come didn't on. make sense. Or remember when he played in the Detroit Pistons game, and uh, that was I think he didn't have the ex- he didn't take the extra day off, played the Pistons game, but missed the other game. Yeah, it's, first, right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Hmm. Uh, I did want to mention to Stone because I was hearing you guys on the way back. Uh, Brandon Clark, I believe, will be playing in his first game back uh, from Achilles uh, when he tore his Achilles. So 
that might be an emotional, uh, you know, thing for Memphis uh, as far as that. So watch out for that as far as the lift for them. And then, of course, the Lakers going in there, coming off a double overtime. You don't know how much they'll have in the tank. But, you know, at this point in the season, you just got to get it done. Yeah, I don't think it'll play too much. I mean, it's his first game back after a year plus. So I don't think it'll play too much in a court production, um, it being his first game. Uh, but, uh, yeah, I mean, as far as the Lakers doing this sort of, you know, LeBron missing against the better teams, the excuse I think they would give, uh, which, you know, how much do well, we they said it? strategic was his words that he used earlier. Yeah. And the, and the strategy, it, my guess is of how they would frame it is that he wants to test the mental toughness and the strength of this team what they can do without him against a better team. That's how I think they would frame it. How much we buy that? I don't know. We've all seen the Le Cap montages of <laughs> him, the books, you know, the, books <laughs> the soccer teams, all that sort of stuff. It's very funny, but um, yeah, I think that's how they would probably frame it. But in, in terms of like actually why they do it, I, I don't have a good answer. I think I, I don't really know. Um, what I do know is that the the Lakers now have a very good record without LeBron. I'm not saying they're better without LeBron because obviously you're not better without your best player or your second best player, but um, it shows a different dynamic with this team when they play without LeBron. And I think it's something interesting because head into the play-in and if you're lucky enough to get into the playoffs – um, you're not going to play LeBron 48 minutes. And I think seeing what works and what doesn't with certain lineups when you don't have LeBron is important. Um, and, you know, without that's the silver lining, I guess, when LeBron is up playing is you get to sort of see that and, and see what lineups can keep you afloat if you were to be sitting. So I think that's sort of the silver lining of all this, but um, it's it's not something that we should probably be wanting to see once a week or anything. LeBron got to play point blank period. <laughs> LeBron got to play, man. Well, he's got to play 65. He's close to that magical 65 mark to get uh, onto the all NBA teams. Yeah. You know, he's, he's very strategical with that. So he'll, he'll make sure he gets, he gets to that. Uh, but um, I see when I answer some of the stuff, stuff we got here in the chat, uh, would love to open this up to the panel. What do you guys think of Giannis's game? I know we're the Lakers, uh, Lakers fast break family over here, but if you guys want to show any love to Giannis or or not love or hate, whatever y'all want, how do you guys feel about uh, Giannis's performance tonight? I'd go with Elrop. Elrop, uh, I thought Giannis was sensational for what the first 46 minutes or so. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> In the end, you know, Giannis did not have the best performance, you know, down, down the stretch or, or in the overtimes, but uh, he set the tone early. Uh, they were more physical. Um, his defense was outstanding, his determination. Um, so I thought he set the tone and he, 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 he was the reason why they jumped out to the big league and was in, control most of the game so i mean Giannis is great man he's a handful you don't see too many guys you know just go at ad like that and uh bury him under the basket and score i mean Sabonis has gotten away with it a little bit but not nowhere near like you know like Giannis did coming at him full speed he's tough man he's passing the ball good um setting great picks playing great defense he you know great great player um you know, I, one of the, one of my pet peeves though is people talk about the Lakers and the foul discrepancy, right? And you know, uh, Indiana talked about it a lot after the last game. And one thing the Lakers don't do is foul guys. It's like foul them. It's kind of hard to foul sometimes when you're not playing defense. That's what people don't realize. The Lakers don't play great defense, so they don't be fouling guys. I, I'm pleading them all game. Please foul Giannis when he gets ahead of steam and don't just let him dunk. Send him to the line. Make him uncomfortable. Make him do something he don't want to do. And they refuse to. I think he had, what, he only shot four free throws until overtime. And how many times did he catch it going in for easy baskets? 
Okay, so that's my take on it. I like that, El Rob. <clears throat> and just and just to add to that, El Rob, you know, I I I've, as a basketball player, I know myself. Like if I go to the, if I go to the hoop, and somebody found me real hard. You best believe next time I, I'm I'm gonna think about that twice, right? Before I go to the hoop. So uh I'm 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 right there with you, El Rob. But like how you said, I think we just we get blown by and then we can't even foul, even if even if we wanted to foul. And then also just to add to that free throw uh, disparity that people always talk about and complain about, it it pissed me off back even when the Warriors did it last year. It's like, do do y'all realize that? we're going inside and we're bigger than a lot of other teams. So means we're going to get shots off in the paint. And it's really just a, really a war down there. And it's really just hand checking and a whole bunch of fouls. And it's a lot more likely to have a foul in the paint versus if you jacking up three pointers or jacking up middies. So that's another thing to add to that L Rob, because it pisses me off how people be like, Oh, Lakers have the refs on their side. It's like, no, um, our playing style actually just kind of forces teams to foul. Because when someone's bigger than you in basketball and you can't stop them, your only choice is to follow them. And that's 99% of the league against Anthony Davis. So just wanted to add to that, El Rob. I'm right there with you. That um, free throw discrepancy thing, people just need to actually look at the the game <laughs> instead of just looking at numbers. The only way to really get like a, a, a solid reading on whether the free throw discrepancy is real, which I don't really believe it is, but – um, if you if you do believe that the only real way to get a measure on that is ultimately, which no one's gonna do, but go through every single foul for each team and calculate like what the percentage of calls they're getting right for each team is. If they're if they're making a lot of bad calls for the Lakers to get to the free throw line, what is that relative to the percentage of calls that other teams are getting? It's not necessarily the total number. It's what is the percentage of calls that is accurate? And no one's going to really know because, I mean, I'm not going to sit there and look through every foul for, for every team, but that's really how you're going to get the, you know, the correct answer as, as to whether you think that's legitimate or not. Um, so before you do say there is a free throw discrepancy, uh, look at that first. Just I don't... Well, yeah. I want to mention that just tonight as far as yeah. the rebounding, because that's been a problem for the Lakers all season. Uh, they did give up uh, quite a few offensive rebounds, but overall the number of rebounds, 69, is the most they've had in 30 years. Wow. Team. So just want to let everybody know that. Go ahead, John. Sorry. No, I was just going just, just gonna to call this out right here. Stone, uh, Robert had said that as to, like, why I guess, you know, we're sitting, Brian. But, and I understand, Robert, but still to me, it's like we just don't have the luxury to do that. We got to playing for it all but um yeah the, he's yeah i understand what he's saying too where you want to make the percentages as high as possible for one game if it means punting another game uh which in this case obviously and really throughout the season it hasn't been punting for whatever reason we win all our games when lebron sits but um yeah i think that if you i i, I think in my opinion, just statistically, it's better to try and go for equal odds on both games than a guaranteed odd on one. Uh, and I think it would be different, too, if I am in a different position. If I'm in a position where right now I'm just I'm fighting, I'm scrapping in the play in, uh, to me, it makes less sense to do that. But I understand as to not you're saying not necessarily that that's why you would do it, but maybe that's how the Lakers are viewing it. And I might agree with that. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. And um, honestly, just want to give a quick shout out to Scar uh, Scarlet and Blue. That's a, that's a, that actually sounds really dope. Said I would really, really love it if NBA NBA and his broadcast partners would do a referee cast to explain why calls were valid, etc. As well, explain the game. That actually would be super dope. But the only problem with that is then we, you know, there would become press precedent would be to start being set because it's like, all right, well, if you call this here, then that means you got to call that there. And then that would, you know, probably make, make things difficult, but for the refs moving forward, but, uh, it yeah, was a really show like that happen. once. I mean, it was a show. Really? They used to do a half an hour show and, um, uh, man, what's his name? Who's over, uh, who's over the head of the officials. Uh, to- McCutcheon. No, well, maybe Garrison? Not, uh, Steve Javi. Javi, oh, yeah. Steve yeah. Javi used to do, he used to be the primary guy on that show. Uh, I think it was on NBA TV, but it was like a half an hour and they'd go through certain plays and say why the call was right and why it was incorrect. 
Um, I think that's good. I think it's good to educate your fan base rather than just let them come to their own conclusions based on what they think is the right call. Like if you explain it to people and educate them as to why something is the way it is, uh, I think that's that's good for the game. The, the smarter your fans are, I think the better it is for the game. Absolutely. I I, I don't know if you guys have you have seen like the the coaches corners, but they be doing that. Like if you have NBA league pass, uh, they do this thing called like coaches corners, which is like kind of cool. Where like a coach will like explain the play that they have. So I guess kind of similar to that. And then real quick, just want to show some love to Lakers in five here in the chat. Said salute. What's going on, Lakers in five? Happy to have you here and everybody else has tuned in. Um, man, guys, Gerald, let, let me get your thoughts on the game, Gerald. I know, I know I, I got L Rob's thoughts, I got Stone's thoughts. Gerald, I know this game was crazy, but what what, what did you pick up from me? What's the biggest takeaway you have? <laughs> they haven't looked much worse than they looked in that first few minutes when they were down 17 to 4. Stone popped in and say, Hey guys, how we're doing? I'm like, we're not doing good at all it was ugly to start off i mean that's that's about as bad as you could play if you're a lakers team and they were down by as many as 19 but to find ways to come back and part of that is also on the bucks because you know we've said this about the lakers where you play with your food if you play with your food long enough it's going to get spoiled or you're going to spill it on the floor and they did just that because they played with their food the bucks could have easily wiped off the Lakers in the first half and be done with them. They could have easily pulled out to a 25, 30 point lead, but they did. They, they got careless uh, and the Lakers took advantage and more power to him. But AD in that second half, uh, he deserves a lot of credit. Now the Lakers, as I told stone repeatedly in the, that fourth quarter had the refs. And I know Louis complaining about how the, the refs are and the Lakers getting all the calls, you know, Tonight, I don't think it holds water because, A, the Bucks shoot a lot of threes, so the Lakers were more aggressive inside, so they deserved more calls. B, the Lakers had not one but two and ones taken away from them. There was could as many be three po- uh, six points taken away from them that they should have had their, you know, on there with the, those two and ones taken away. And by doing that, the Lakers could have even, you know, made it, easier for them to win a regulation so again credit to them and credit to darvin ham i know everybody hates it when we have to give credit to darvin ham but when you're part of this comeback obviously he was continually playing things around didn't like all the guard rotations that he had but obviously with a brown lebron out and jackson hayes absolutely playing terrible uh you know that he i mean despite all that they found and Dinwiddie was for like three and a half quarters, uh, actually four quarters. It wasn't until overtime that he scored his first basket. That yeah, he was. Play- there were several Lakers who were letting the team down in that first half as well. The guards were not being able to shoot, but they found it. D'Lo, your man, as the president of the D'Angelo Russell fan club, John. You know he came. He started that drive in the third quarter. He started his usual third quarter coming out of the locker room heat check and that helped the Lakers made it more sustainable, but it wasn't until the Lakers made that push in the fourth quarter and all credit to AD who got used and abused in that first half to really get things going and man gutted it through another gutty performance where he looks half dead. (laughs) He's exhausted. He's hurting on his knee. They're rubbing him all over the place as far as on the sidelines, but yet he still found a way, excuse me, to get it done, man. He still found a way to get it done and and all credit to the team. And Austin Reeves, I know we've been hard on him this season, but you know what? He played some of the best defense he can. He cannot play the athletic guards, John and Stone and L. Rob, very well. But a, a, a crafty player like Lillard, who he's like got two, three inches on, he can play him pretty well because he plays hard defense. He's just not very athletic and quick. So, you know, if he's playing an older guard like that, he can do a little bit better. We saw that tonight in clutch plays down the road. He he manned up, played good defense, and I got to give him a lot of credit as well for getting it done tonight. Absolutely. I feel like <clears throat> half a def- – not even half. Most of defense, I feel like it's just energy. Yes, it absolutely helps if, you know, you're 6'4 and you're springy and you can – 
jump up and down and you can recover. Or if you're Giannis, you, uh, you got these long arms that make up a whole bunch of space. Um, but yeah, I feel like a lot of defense is just effort and Austin Reeves give, gives effort. And um, also real quick, Scarlet and Blue said, thanks, Jill, for giving Ham some credit when he does a good job. But just real quick, I want to give L Rob some credit too, because L Rob earlier in the stream, he was showing some love to Darvin Ham too. So that's L Rob and Gerald standing up for Darvin Ham, giving him some love, man. I, I wish he wouldn't have played Jackson Hayes so much because Jackson yeah. Hayes was absolutely miserable tonight. Uh, he didn't play Cam Reddish too much because he saw Cam mm-hmm. Reddish was just not feeling it at all tonight. But um, he did give credit to where he, did. he found a way to have this team continued to perform despite the fact they were so fatigued because you could tell they were gassed they were really gassed especially ad and they still found a way to get it done i have a question for you guys uh if i can john so ad shoots eight threes today may three um is that do you guys want to see him taking threes at all no too okay. damn big <laughs> to be taking threes. I had this discussion with Z uh, at the beginning of the season when Ham was talking about this new style five out offense, giving AD uh, at least five threes a game and all that. And then I'm thinking to myself, okay, he's coming off a season where he shot 18% from three. He's a career 27% three point shooter. And although it worked tonight, it worked tonight. And yes, uh, the egg is on my face, if that's the case. But really, L. Rob, he is statistically a very bad, and up until this point for the past month and a half, he's been awful shooting the outside from the three. Every shot that you have him shoot out there, a three-pointer, is one that you take away from inside that he's more efficient at. That's all I say. So if you stick him out there for shooting more threes, you lose the efficiency he could give you inside. Uh, I'll leave it at that, L. Rob. I, I think the way I view it is you want your best players doing what they're best at is, is the way I view it. And so I prefer a D inside and we saw his touch. Like he has great touch around the rim, um, and, which is weird generally. Cause that typically translates to being a pretty decent shooter from outside. Doesn't happen to be the case with AD for whatever reason. Um, but the way I typically view it is if he, if, if like, let's say like, Evan Mobley, for example, is a a younger player who this season, especially later in the season, has started to take more threes, and he's not good at it. But in the long run, if he is able to get to an average point, it really helps the team out to have someone that can space the floor. But he's he's doing it at 21, 22. If you're if you're Anthony Davis and you're 31 now it's a lot more difficult to develop something that's never been a part of your game than it is if you're a decade younger. So um, if AD were on a team where they could experiment with that, and if he were a lot younger uh, and he was going to, you know, be a long-term part of the team um, and could do that, then, then I'd be for it and, you know, go through the, go through the growing pains of that. I'd be willing to do that. But the fact that, it's never been a part of his game and he's over 30. Uh, I think it's very, very rare that a player adds something to their game. That's never been a part of their game to a degree that is helpful to a team, especially a team that's aspirations are contending. So for me, I'm against it and I'd rather AD just focus on what he's good at, which is dominating in the paint. That's That's funny. Eduardo, did you get Eduardo's comment on there, John? Let me see. What what did Eduardo say? He said, if you're feeling it, if you're feeling it, stroke it, that thing, AD. Yeah, he should shoot with Westbrook's confidence. (laughs) (laughs) Just get him up. He did shoot shoot in the championship season. He shot it pretty decent in the playoffs that year. He did. He He even hit that one. He He shot 38% from three in the in the in the playoffs in uh in 2020 so the yeah. more the more players on your floor that can space is the better i mean that ultimately is what helps your team that the nba has become the space. ultimate the, the ultimate point of or uh not point but the ultimate um i guess attribute of basketball is you want to create as much space as you can 
and take away as much space as you can on the other. And like space has become the quintessential uh, centerpiece of what basketball is. And the more guys you have that can space the floor, the more opportunity there is to score. But when you can't space the floor at an efficient enough level, you're doing it for not because the defense isn't going to really respect you to the degree needed to create that space, if that makes sense. So um, you, you have to be good enough for the defense to be able to draw out to you and really draw out hard to create that space and, and create more opportunities for drivers and such. And to, to, to add to you, to your guys's point about, you know, Anthony Davis taking so many three pointers, I feel like, you know, I, I can I can only speak on what I know, right? I mean, basketball is basketball at the end of the day. Yes, there's different, you know, clearly different high levels of basketball or whatnot. And when I when I played basketball, um, I knew, you know, if 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 there's a, a, a big in there or this dude that I'm guarding me just got Giannis like type of energy to where energized bunny, I'm all over you. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be a bruiser. Come in here, you gonna you gonna get fouled. Like I would settle for a lot more jumpers. So, like, I, that that's probably Anthony Davis's mindset. I mean, uh, granted, on a whole another level, because instead of him facing some dude at a JUCO level or, or at 24 hour fitness, he's facing Giannis Hansetokounmpo, right? So, totally get Anthony Davis, you know, maybe being like, ah, you know, may, maybe not tonight. But that's not the mindset that we need him to have. We need him to have that killer mindset to where it's like, oh, that's the type of energy you got, Giannis? Okay. Take this shoulder to the chest. Take this one again and take it all game. And let me see if you're going to keep getting up. But I feel like him, and that's a great point, L. Rob. I'm really happy you brought that up. Like him taking eight three pointers shows you right there. And then he was, he wasn't, he wasn't even looking for that smoke tonight. He was like, you know what? I'll settle with this three right here. I don't got to bump with Giannis. I don't got to gotta go body to body. And I mean, I think it's just, it's, it's a soft. Typical Anthony Davis mentality, like realistically, unfortunately, to be honest, because um, also another thing is, is L. Rob, you mentioned his shooting in 2020. His shooting was big in 2020, but I also one thing I've stated so many times is like our roster is so much different this year than it was then to where it's like we could maybe space a little bit and still have a Dwight or a JaVale down there to be able to clean up the glass. But it's like now if AD shooting, we got Rui. It's like six, eight, cleaning up the glass, and that's just not going to work. True. Yeah. Absolutely. Agree with you man. guys wholeheartedly, man. Just a great game. Absolutely great game. Uh, Sunday Sunday in the chat was saying A.J. Green cooked him in high school. A.J. Green is one of the <laughs> – I was saying it in the playback stream. He's one of the sneaky players, end of the bench players, where I think he could be a real impact if he gets in the right situation like – Lakers could certainly use someone that's a, a flamethrower from three um, and, and, you know, can run around off ball. So that's someone he, almost probably nobody knows his name right now, but I think um, AJ Green is someone that, you know, might be worth a look at for a throw in if a trade were ever to occur or something like that. Shooter. Right. He reminds me of, of Sam, Sam Murrow from the Cavs. Just, Straight yeah. <laughs> comes off screens, just yak, 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 and Mer and Merrill's been like really important for them this season. He's turned yeah. into someone like that. So, uh, yeah, th th these guys on the fringes are, are are people that should be paid attention to. Same thing with uh, we talked about it in the stream. Like uh, the Lakers don't really have a backup center. Like Hayes and Wood are probably best as third string guys at this point in their career. Um, that like you want maybe spot backup here and there but you don't want them necessarily as a full 82 game season backup center uh they have their deficiencies and there's guys that are out there that can be that guys like trey jameson who has uh you know been on the the lucky part of 10 days and such like that where it's the end of the season and you know guys are sitting so the league's at a little bit of a weaker point you're playing but He's still being impactful. There's a guy like Charles Bediaco that's still available, uh, undrafted free agent. There's there's guys out there that you can take a chance rather than keep paying these known commodities that are what they are. Like we we pretty much knew what Jackson Hayes was going to be by the time he got to the Lakers, and he's been decent. Like he's been a good third string guy, I would say. Probably not someone I want playing as a full time backup. Uh, so I'd rather 
take that chance on somebody who hasn't necessarily gotten that opportunity for five, six years beforehand and, and might be able to show that. Now, Rob, any, anything to add on to that, my friend, or? No, I mean, Stone's definitely much more knowledgeable on, on all these guys is on the fringes. Uh, um, yeah. AJ green. I wouldn't know him if I ran into him at Sam's <laughs> Club tomorrow. So I, I, to be quite honest, I probably wouldn't either. Yeah, I, I, I would the, the first time I, I really saw him, and I could tell the way the Lakers um, played him that he's a shooter, that he's probably a good three-point shooter. He did not look like he was playing with confidence today. Um, you know, he passed up some open looks and, and dribbled into tougher shots or more difficult situations for Milwaukee. Um, but that's to be expected if you're not getting consistent minutes. So, but no, I, 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 Jackson Hayes, I mean, he, we don't win Boston games. He he had a good run where he played very well. Beginning of the season, he didn't do anything. Um, it would be hard for anybody to play as bad as he played today. Um, so, I mean, he's just that proverbial roller coaster. You, I mean, you, you, you never, I just, his basket, his court awareness just isn't, isn't, isn't it's there. there. It's just not there. The, the problem is he's a rim manage. protector. He's a rim protector, L. Rob, that doesn't protect the rim very well. Man. Yeah. Yeah. He's always a step like, that much off from getting a block shot or whatever. But I mean, he plays hard. So I, he's I, good I, rolling to the basket. I'll give yeah. him that. He's, he reminds yeah, me of like, he's a, rebounder. He's, a, he's a good, good offensive rebounder. He's, he, he, he you know, he works hard. So. But yeah, if we can find somebody, uh, you know, a little more skilled, I don't, I don't know if those guys are just out there hanging out. But yes, we, I'm all for it. He, I, I, go ahead. Oh, go, go ahead. No, you go, you go, Stone. Go ahead. I just wanted to ask a question, kind of based on that. Is like, let's say we face up against the Mavericks in the play, and how concerned are you guys about the fact that they now have Gafford and Lively, and obviously AD is not going to play 48 minutes for the entire game. If AD were to sit, like, to me, that's a real issue. Now you have Hayes on, uh, you know, having to defend the pick and roll. They're probably going to abuse him over and over again. Luke is a pretty smart ball handler. Uh, they're going to want to try and exploit that. And then you have, you know, maybe you have 12 minutes of Hayes. And during that 12 minutes, that's pretty concerning if you have to go against Lively or uh, Gafford for the entirety of that stretch. So, um, just kind of what's your guys' thoughts on that and, and how detrimental might that be if we have to face them in the play-in? To me, that's extremely concerning. And that plays that, that kind of plays into a part of something that I've been saying in the in in the preseason, which is um you just kind of alluded to uh Stone, which as far as like us, we needed to have a backup big, right? And said this over and over and over, but why were we so damn dominant in 2020 is we had two amazing backup bigs that just gave us an amazing uh, back line of defense that just a lot of times when our guard got blown by, like they just wouldn't foul and would just be like, all right, you're going to have to get over Dwight. You're going to have to get over JaVale or, or, or AD. And then we end up, you know, getting away from that. And then the Mavs, they have a phenomenal trade deadline and they bring in Gafford to just run pick and rolls straight with Kyrie and Luca. And that's, that's, it fits exactly their mold on top of, uh, on top of lively. Now to answer your question to me, the reason why it's the reason why it would be um, concerning is because we would get exploited in the, in the non AD minutes. But I feel like this is when a simple adjustment, and I know Gerald, every time I say it, you always knock me for it, but I'm going to keep saying on it, but a simple thing of like bringing in a Dwight Howard, bringing in a Demarcus Cousins, just a big body, okay? Because like, look, like, well, there Gaff are big bodies. I'll, I'll give you that. <laughs> yeah, look, Gafford, uh, he may have his way with a Dwight. He may have his way with a Demar with a Demarcus Cousins because you know he's a little bit more seasoned player in this in this league. He knows how to do a little bit more out of that out of that short role. But lively. Lively such a raw, young, just talent who's just honestly, I mean, low-key the same build as Hayes. There's one of those like long, uh, lengthy, skinny guys. He's a little bit stronger than Hayes, but also a lot better than Hayes. But what I'm saying is like he's just so young that if you were to throw in a Dwight, throw in a DeMarcus Cousins, a real 
NBA vet who has, you know, experience in this league and who just rough him up, just rough it up. He's 19. Derek Lively is like 19, 20 years old. You mean to tell me an NBA vet like DeMarcus Cousins who just strikes intimidation into his players or Dwight Howard who's seen it all? I mean, you can go back to Dwight Howard back, back in the day. The man's literally seen it all. And he could absolutely stick a couple of elbows in Lively, stick just and, and I think that right there could make the world would make a, the world of a difference in a series like that. But nonetheless, don't to answer your question, would not want to face them. <laughs> would not want to face them at all. Uh, for the, I'll have the chocolate milk for the nightcap tonight. Joe Soro is going to have a nightcap tonight, at 11 p.m. He's coming back from Orange County right now, so he is in route. But uh, great victory. You, you know what? If the Lakers would not have won tonight. You know, Joe, <laughs> you want to do nightcap? No, no, no. So, yes, uh, he will do the nightcap tonight at 11 because, of course, great Lakers victory. But, yeah, John, big shout out to you. Big shout out to Stone. L. Rob, great to have you back, my friend. I, I loved it when you reached out to me the other day and said you're going to be uh, on our shows uh, here because they're on the East Coast. Still great to have you guys back. I love it when it's like this man. We get so much great participation. Laker Nick doing the polls out there on playback.tv. Uh, it just, it makes it for a greater experience. You guys, you guys just big hats off to each and every one of you guys for, for all the stuff you did tonight, John. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you, Joe. Thank you. Uh, L Rob, man, it's great. It, it is great to, to, to I, L Rob, I've heard a lot about you, brother. So it is great to, you know what I'm saying? Be on the, be on the stream together. Look, Lakers legend. No, Lakers, I, I don't know about that, but thank you. I always enjoy uh the only guy that Laker Tom likes. <laughs> <laughs> well, me and Laker Tom, we both tend to be a little more optimistic and thinking the Lakers are gonna do a little bit better than that's why he likes you. <laughs> probably should. So um, but yeah, no, I always enjoy listening to you, uh John, as well as Stone with you guys. I guys are on. I will want to say one thing real quick. Uh, with regarding what Stone just said, I agree. I mean, I, I, I was not happy with Washington giving Gafford up um, to Dallas, but kudos to them to making the move. And absolutely, they're going that makes them a whole different uh, team, and they're going to be dangerous. And we have no answer because you know playing that pick and roll defense, they're going to eat us up. And and uh, Jackson Hayes will look you know pretty bad. And I do think one of my uh, things that I really don't like. Uh, it's the way Dwight Howard was treated at the end of his career. I absolutely think he could have still contributed. I don't know if he can now, but I think he, you know, for whatever reason, uh, people didn't like him. He still had, you know, he still had some game left to play 10, 12 minutes, 15 minutes, like a lot of guys do um, when, you know, when no team would sign him. So that was, that was you know, kind of sad to see a great, great player like Dwight go out the way he did. Boogie, I think it was time for him. So <laughs> he's, he's in Taiwan now. So Dwight is. Uh, no, Boogie. Boogie oh, signed with uh, okay. no. Taiwan. Dwight, Dwight, Dwight was though, last in year. Asia too, right? Yeah. For a while, he was in Taiwan Rico, last year, shooting threes and yeah. doing all that stuff. Doing thought he was in that. Puerto Rico. <laughs> thought he was a guard. Demarcus Cousins <laughs> was in Puerto Rico. Okay. All right. Uh, real, real, I know Third we're getting, all over. I know we're about to wrap up, but. I have one final question for you guys, and you could That's just why. be as, as quick as you want. But let's say we were to get into the eight seed. Um, it, we, you know, we could finish out really strong this season. Who of the three of the Kings, Mavericks, and Suns would you most want to face in a play in situation? Well, that ties into what I was going to ask because I, I, Stone, I think with the tiebreakers to Dallas and Sacramento, I don't think we have a chance to get into the eighth. I think not, uh, I mean, I'm sorry, the seventh and sixth. So eighth is a possibility um, because Phoenix has the hardest schedule in the NBA for the rest of the season. So that's, that's the possible likelihood. I would say Dallas for me is the toughest matchup, I think, of any of those teams. But who who would you want to face the most? Okay, then I'd probably say Sacramento. I'm gonna oh, yeah. still say Sacramento. I still say, I know our I know our record sucks against them. I know Sabonis has like oh I have uh, the AD here's the here's my AD I beat you oh, every time card that I keep on signing every <laughs> single game. But uh, I still say Sacramento versus the Lakers because Sacramento they're just not experienced enough in in those big games. They've only had one 
short, brief run in the playoffs against Golden State. And uh, I really think if there's any team that matches up with the Lakers experience wise that the Lakers should be able to handle, it would be them. I'm I'm in agreement with you, Gerald. Um because because of what you said, but also because of like we would just get exploited so much by the pick and roll that Kyrie and Luca let they they honestly spam it. Like if you watch the Mavs, they run it literally every single time down court, whether it be with um with lively or Gafford. So we would that we we get spammed out with that. And the Suns, like honestly, guys, the Suns are in the eighth seed. I'm not trying to see the Suns in the playoffs in a one game setting type thing. Like they have they have Durant Kevin, Booker. They have Durant. There you go. Like they have Durant Booker. Like Durant, Kevin Durant. I I always say this, guys. Like you guys know LeBron James is my GOAT. But if I had to pick one player, they said, John, like your life is on the line. You got to pick somebody to go get a bucket. I'm taking Kevin Durant 10 times out of 10. And that's what playoffs comes down to is about just getting a buck. It's about like, it's not as so much about, you know, threes over twos. It's more about making sure every single time down court, you convert. You cannot let no, no possessions go down court where you have an empty possession. And it's very hard to believe that Kevin Durant and Booker are going to let too many empty possessions go down and drain. It's either going to be a midi or it's going to be a foul or worse comes worse. It'll be a three. Um, so with all that being said, even though we don't line up very well with the Kings, I feel like it's just, it's just like it's process of elimination. <laughs> Honestly, that's the way I did that equation, to be real. Yeah, I I, I would uh, the least I'm with uh, Gerald. I would not want to play Dallas that they, they are the toughest team, I would think, right now. And you got Kyrie who can make shots and Luca is Luca. No, no, thank you. I'll pass on that. <laughs> um, if I had a choice, I probably want to play Phoenix, so I do not want to see De'Aaron Fox again abusing, abusing D'Lo or abusing Reeves or abusing whoever we we put in there. And and Monk always raises his level against us too. I, Kyle Bell's ringing in Sacramento one game. No, give me Phoenix. I'll, I'll play some older guys, slower guys. I think we match up a little bit better with with with, with Phoenix. But having said that, if we do get into the HC, it's going to be because we passed Phoenix. So yeah, it looks like if we do, it'll be either. Um, and I think Dallas may be pat. They're blowing out the Kings tonight, so I think they may be passing them for the six seed. But yeah. we don't own the tiebreaker on the Kings, so yeah, we're still yeah yeah we're we'd have to win like four times because we're three back in the loss column. No, but yeah. we're not going to pass the Kings. But I'm saying Dallas can pass the Kings. Yeah, Dallas. Kings, Dallas yeah. Kings they're playing. They're, they're, they're playing Tuesday and Friday. So okay. I mean, so they're playing Friday. It's a baseball series, so they are playing. Uh, I think Friday also in Sacramento. Okay. Really, yeah, so basically, game. one of those two are going to be in seven, probably. Yeah. yeah. If we take it, so it's a tough, t- like we're we're going out of the out of the pan and into the fire with this ending of the season like we're, we're just doing enough just to make the play in and then once we make the play in we have to win the play in maybe two playing games but hopefully one all that just to play just to play the nuggets yeah. which is our our kryptonite it seems so it's and that is well no if we if we get in the seven the eight then we we wouldn't be playing the nuggets we'd be playing the two seed and that's what i like yeah and that's yeah. what i like el Rob. If, if we yeah, that right. would line up pretty good if it's OKC. Okay. Very well. OKC. Very well. I, it, I, I, I'd rather play the Wolves than OKC. I've been pretty vocal about this, but I'd rather, but I'd rather, but I'd rather play either than <laughs> Denver. <laughs> <laughs> rather yeah. play quite literally anybody. I don't, <laughs> I don't think I've heard any Lakers fans say they want to play Denver right away. Yeah. I, I, I've, I've you got to be a psychopath, to, or yeah. you're not a Lakers yeah. fan. Yeah. One of the two. <laughs> but it's it's still bunched up. I mean, New Orleans is not. I mean, they're only a game up in a lost column on 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 the Kings yeah. and Dallas. So who knows? They may slide down. We're not going to. I don't think we're going to know matchups really until the final night of the regular season. I think it's going to come down to, for a lot of teams, the final night to see where ultimately everybody uh, ends up settling. Sean says he wants the toenail clippers. Uh, and uh, <laughs> clippers have been really bad as a Really bad. Yeah. Really bad. <laughs> Crazy stat on that, just because they're the little brothers of the Lakers. And the, I, I was doing some <laughs> research. In the last 10 games, they've been averaging 108 points per game. 
The Spurs average 113. So they've just been like below average. Uh, but typical Clippers around this time. Well, they're playing six on four because you have James Harden defending his own guys. If that you saw that one last opening. week. That was no, I missed that. Mm. El Rob, he literally El Rob, he literally passed the ball to Kawhi and then ran out and like closed, genuinely closed out and like jumped and made an effort. I, I already know yeah, that. He was like, on offense. <laughs> while he was on offense. I saw that. That was crazy. I've never seen I probably have at some point, but a player defending his own his own teammate from three is incredible. It's gotta be hardened. <laughs> uh funny stuff. <clears throat> All right, my friend. I think that that does it. Did a great job, John. And thank you again to Stone and L. Rob, and also as well Laker Nick. Uh, and I heard um, just told me now Henry Hill from Courtside Lakers came in on the very end. He said he did a Hollywood Hulk Hogan last second uh, before the show goes <laughs> off the air type deal. Uh, and yeah, so congrats. Yeah, thank you to him as well. And Joe Soros said he'll be on tonight uh, doing the nightcap. I said I'll join him. I'll bring my chocolate milk there. I promised you if the Lakers win, I would chug some chocolate milk. I will do so tonight on the nightcap. Is that is it is it the powder nest quick or which one is it? No, which I'm gonna go out to the store and get the real the real okay. thing. Get the, okay, yeah, okay. I uh, that nest quick uh, I think I, I think was okay as a kid, but yeah, I can't handle it. I, I go for the the stuff like right out of the fridge right there at the store. I was gonna do it tonight, but I was in such a hurry to get home. But. Gerald did say on the playback, which it, obviously you should start listening on the playback so you can hear these things. But Gerald did say that uh, he'll spike his chocolate milk for a thousand dollars. So yeah, <laughs> if you because they got said a they, bag to drop. Yeah, because I got a lot. Of, I got a lot of uh, junk when I would not. Because Darren was gracious enough to give us a super chat for twenty bucks, and he said get put a you know get a drink, and I said I won't. And uh, tonight they said, well, what's your price? And I said, well, I said. I, a thousand dollars. I'll spike. I'll uh, I'll go ahead and have a shot for a thousand dollars. But come uh, on, Darren. You you know you know the price tag. <laughs> <laughs> but you guys are crazy. Uh, the way you guys get Joe. Joe is going to be dead from <laughs> the wow. liver. The way you guys are terrible. They just keep feeding him money. Do this, Joe. Do that. Ten shots in ten seconds. Come on, you can do it. You can do it, and he'll do it. So um, I will tell him to get the top shelf stuff for tonight. Uh, I don't know what he'll bring, but yeah, I'll tell him to get something for you guys. So see what happens. But yeah, L Rob Stone, I know you guys are Midwest and East Coast guys, and you're on a different time zone. I just absolutely appreciate you stopping by, and I'd always welcome stopping by. Uh, Stone, you with me uh, tomorrow on the playback for Memphis? I will be. Uh, thankfully, these Laker games are not starting, you know, at midnight or whatever. Well, they're so. ending pretty late. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, you know, it's I'll be able to make more playback games and and hopefully be on more post games uh, as the season comes to an end. Awesome, awesome. And L Rob, you know L Rob, anytime, man. Anytime you got, it, just you tell me when and and we'll send you the link, man. Anytime. Thank you. I'll be around. How's Michigan State, my friend? Uh, it was not pretty against uh <laughs> against uh UNC, but you know what they, you know. Struggled all season and ended up. Uh, if they would probably would have played any other, if they would have been playing a three seed, they probably would have won one. But because you underachieved all season, you had to you get in the eight nine slot and you're paying a number one seed. So you get what you you know you you earned that position. So what disappointing the, season overall. Disappointing season overall. What I wonder what the uh, Spartans felt like tonight, seeing Draymond Green uh, literally just like you know I don't Man, know Hanlon, who who was he yeah, Patty, Patty Mills he upset the entire country of Australia tonight so oh boy yes I think he just hates any non-American at this point <laughs> he, he doesn't like Nurkic he doesn't like Gobert apparently Patty Mills I I don't know he he seems to not like the He's patriotic man he's fighting for his country <laughs> yeah. he better he better hold it down he better be worried about Houston because they're coming for him man they coming there what what they on like a nine game winning streak right now yep that's crazy that I'd is rather crazy. I, if we have to stay in a nine seat I'd rather face Houston than the Warriors so. yeah. what every day of the week <laughs> yeah. yeah absolutely all right, John, send us home, my friend. You did a great job, as always. 
All right. Well, everybody, oh, appreciate you. The heart guys. pitch. You got to give everybody the heart pitch where oh. you're at. Oh, absolutely. All right. Cool, cool, cool. Yeah. If anybody wants to come check me out, man, I do have two channels. Uh, one of my channels is Clutch Talk. As you guys see, it's an NBA talk show. I'm on YouTube, Apple Podcasts, Spotify. I drop two episodes per week, bringing you one recap episode and then other little, you know, more set, more focused episode during the week. And then also got another channel. It's called Lakers Corner. That's just on YouTube bringing you all type of Lakers content, man. But as always, Gerald, I appreciate the uh, opportunity to hang out with these cool guys right here, man. L. Rob and my guy Stone. Uh, absolutely. Just thank you guys, man. You guys were tremendous. And I'm just glad to be here and honored to be part of it. Absolutely. All right, guys. Well, L. Rob, Stone, you guys got any last words to say? Go Lakers. Go Lakers. Everybody. Thank you guys. Thank you guys for tuning in. Make sure you guys subscribe to the Lakers Fast Break family. Hit that subscribe button and um, stay tuned for the nightcap with Joe Soro at 11 p.m. Pacific. And we'll be back tomorrow, guys. Peace.